There is so much to get in Cyberpunk 2077, but some stuff you just gotta see. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 Cyberpunk 2077 items you need to find. At number 10 is Skippy the Talking Gun. Here is a ridiculous thing you can find early in the game. Once you get to Act 2, where the rest of Night City opens up to you, that's when this thing becomes available for you to find. It's literally a talking gun. Getting it is actually pretty easy as long as you know where it is. It's in an alley in Vista del Rey. It's marked by a question mark on your map. You look in the southern part of the area to find it, and once you get to the mark, all you do, pick up the gun. There's a bit of a conversation you have to go through before you can use it, but the cool thing about it is that it actually has two different firing modes, puppy-loving pacifist or stone-cold killer. The first makes it so the gun's bullets only hit your enemy's legs, while the second makes it so it exclusively hits their heads. The gun has some pretty amusing dialogue, actually, and it actually does let you choose what mode you want the gun to have, but be careful. After 50 kills, the gun will switch to the other mode, which permanently locks you out of your original choice. So when Skippy asks you to choose your gun mode, choose the one you don't want so that it'll switch to the one that you do want after 50 kills. Basically, the gun's kind of an a but it's a powerful weapon that is totally unique. At number 9 is Johnny Silverhand's gun. At the end of Act 1, you experience a flashback where you play as the legendary edge runner Johnny Silverhand, who has an absolutely devastating weapon that basically explodes someone's head every time you fire it. On top of being ridiculously powerful, it has a really, like, awesome reload animation to say the very least. It's gonna take a while, but it's actually possible to get this gun. If you want it, you just go through the story till you get to Act 3. That's when you unlock a side job called Chippin' In. Basically, in it, you help Johnny get revenge on the people that wronged him. You just go through the mission until you encounter this guy named Grayson. He's got Johnny's gun, so you just take him out and pick it up before you leave. The gun is called the Melorian Arms 3516, and it's a legendary iconic weapon that's not quite as powerful as when Johnny used it, but it's still pretty damn good. You still get that sweet reload animation too, so if you're a pistol user or want to emulate Silverhand, it's a must-get weapon. At number 8 is the Caliburn Sports Car. It's a really good and totally free sports car you can pick up after completing the Ghost Town main story mission. All you have to do is go back to the place where you helped Pan Am deal with Nash. It's right outside the Rocky Ridge in a tunnel. You drive a little past where you got into a shootout, you'll find a shipping container and the sports cars inside it. Looking around, this is actually kind of a little Batman reference. I mean, Mark Man. Check out this note. I became the man Night City didn't deserve. Yeah, it's Batman. And I guess this is his supercar. Trying to drive this thing out of the cave can be kind of a struggle, but once you get it back in Night City, it is quite the beast. Normally, it would cost a boatload of cash, too, so getting it for free is super nice. At number 7, you can get some free Mantis Blades. Like, this is something that is very much worth hunting down as early as possible. Mantis Blades are a piece of cyberware that usually cost upwards of $45,000 and require at least level 20 street cred. So, on top of, you know, being free, these Mantis Blades are actually better than the kind you normally buy at a Ripper Dot, and they do not have the street cred requirement at all, so you could just start using them right away. Seriously, normally you'd have to get through more than half the game to get to an upgrade like this, but this thing is just out in the world, sitting around free for you to take. It's found in Corpo Plaza in the city center. Uh, like, look in the northern part of this area for a cyber psycho sighting called the Phantom of Night City. This guy's really tough, so if you don't think you can take him, just sneak into the area he's in. The chest containing the Mantis Blades can be found down this little side alley. There is no reason not to get this thing. It gives you a fourth weapon that can be incredibly useful, even if you don't care about melee weapons. At number 6 is the Widowmaker, which is an iconic precision rifle dropped by Nash when you fight him in the main mission called Ghost Town. For reference, in case you're wondering which mission, it's the one when you first meet Pan Am Parker. All you have to do is make sure to pick it up when he drops it, carelessly, foolishly, uh, because the thing is really good and is a really good addition to your arsenal. It's a tech rifle, meaning you can charge it for extra damage, and it does bonus chemical damage with a chance to poison enemies, and it fires in a circular pattern, like a shotgun. Now, it is not the best at really long ranges because of the spread. Like, you don't compare something to a shotgun and be like, and you can use it at long ranges, no. But at regular ranges and closer, it's super powerful. Because of its spread, it's also pretty hard to 
miss the target. If you are looking for a good weapon that absolutely punishes and you're not looking for a sniping situation, this is the thing to get. At number 5 is a free mono wire, which is a cyberware weapon kind of like the Mantis Blades, in that it is expensive as hell, much more so than even the Mantis Blades would if you bought the Mantis Blades. But it also gives you an additional weapon slot, it's also very powerful, and it's really just cool as hell to use. This is another one you can just get for free if you look around. There's a garage in Kabuki in the Watson area. It's kind of a totally random spot, but if you open up the doors and look around, you'll find a mono wire in the container beside the wall to the left. It's legendary quality, so it's actually better than the standard one you can buy, and it has, again, no street cred requirements, so you can just start using it right away. If you've ever thought, wow, it would be cool if they combined Star Wars and Indiana Jones, this is the weapon for you, as it is basically a lightsaber whip. And getting another piece of freebie cyberware is just automatically good. Finding both this and the Mantis Blades is basically saving you like $90,000. At number 4 is the Lizzie Iconic Gun. Here is a pistol you get right at the start of Act 2 and it is incredibly good. It will outclass anything you can get that is early in the game and can carry you through some pretty tough fights and even just the whole game if you take the time to upgrade it. The Lizzie isn't too hard to find either. It's located in the basement of Lizzie's Bar in the Kabuki area. Uh, near where you first meet Judy, it's really hard to miss too. You can go back here anytime after completing Judy's story mission and you will be able to pick it up. If you get it as early as possible, it'll have nearly double the DPS most guns have. It also does thermal damage, so it can cause burn and it fires an extra round every shot. Yeah, it's pink and it looks like a toy, but it's seriously one of the best weapons in the game. It is absolutely worth getting. It doesn't matter. Don't, don't, don't get all antsy about this gun's looks. Honestly, you would not want to meet somebody holding one of these in a dark alley, especially if you don't like being burned. At number 3 is Satori, which is not the best weapon in the game or anything like that, but it is fairly easy to miss and it's acquired fairly early on, so it can help a lot if you want to focus on close range damage. During the heist, after you get the relic and have to escape, T-Bug will open the balcony doors for you to make your getaway. If you want to get this unique katana, you need to ignore that and instead go up the stairs. The door to the helipad will be open, so just deal with the guards and the weapon can be found in the AV hover car or whatever this thing is. To reiterate, it is not the best weapon like I said, but it's got increased critical damage at the cost of base damage and it's still very strong for when you get it. It's a good weapon and it's pretty easy to miss and that's why we put this on the list. At number 2 is the Overwatch, which is an absolute beast. It is a sniper rifle with crazy range, a night vision scope, and a custom silencer. It also reloads way faster than most other sniper rifles, and that's all good, but what really makes it stand out is just how powerful it is. Combine its power, precision, and the silencer, and you can clear out entire enemy bases pretty easily. This is the weapon to use if you're trying to deal with enemies that have a higher level than you, you just hang back and snipe away and they'll struggle to fight back. The best thing about it is it's also pretty darn easy to get. You just complete Pan Am's missions until you get a call for a side job called Riders on the Storm. After you successfully rescue Saul, she'll just give you the gun at the end of the mission, so there is really no way to miss it. It's more the mission that you can miss. This gun is powerful, quiet, and pretty easy to get, so it is definitely worth spending the little bit of time that it takes to find. And finally, at number one, you can get the entire Johnny Silverhand outfit. Now, if you want to be a real Silverhand super fan, you're going to need this entire outfit. It's a surprisingly complicated process, so I'll give a quick rundown how to get each piece of the man's gear. Getting his tank top is pretty straightforward, actually. You just continue to do main missions until the job tapeworm appears. And when you go to the motel room and get Johnny's dog tags as part of the story, you also get his tank top. You get his aviators from doing the side job chipping in, which is the same one you can get his gun from. As long as you play through it, you're not going to miss the aviator glasses. The pants, however, a little more hidden. You have to do a side gig called Psycho Fan, which is found in the Glen to the east. The job tasks you with stealing a guitar, but the pants are there too, and getting them is not required for finishing the mission, so to find them, you're going to want to look in a suitcase in the bedroom when you have the chance. His shoes are also pretty hidden. You can get them from a different gig called Family Heirloom, which is on Charter Hill to the south. It's another thing you can miss, 
So when you get to where the objective is, just look around in the lockers and you'll find his shoes. Finally, his samurai jacket is obtained from doing the mission chip and in, just like his aviators. Rogue just gives it to you before you head out, so it's kind of hard to miss. Now you can look just like Johnny, at least clothing wise. I mean, Johnny is Keanu Reeves and you probably don't look like Keanu Reeves, but the stuff is pretty good armor wise as well. So it's worth hunting down if you want to look like Silverhand or not. Getting all this stuff gets you the breathtaking achievement, by the way, a reference to the 2019 E3 Cyberpunk conference. Did you get any of these? Did you get all of these? Are you gonna? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Do not forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.